Hi, I'm David from MK Dub. I'm a synth guy, so I usually record my gear direct in. But I've always dreamed of having a high-end microphone, even though I don't really need one. And in my dreams, that microphone was usually the AEA R88 Mark II. Does it live up to expectations? Let's find out after the open. Because I'm a synth guy, I usually just make do with low cost, high value microphones like the SM57, SM58s, the Audix i5, CAD M179 for an Omni uh, multi-pattern multi condenser mic. And when I wanted to splurge a little bit, I would maybe buy a modded Octava 319 or get one of the nice Electro Voice microphones. But I've been doing this for a while and I thought it was time to experience a high-end microphone. So why did I want a ribbon microphone? Well, when you're talking about ribbon microphones, a word that's often used to describe them is classy. All the cliches that you hear, that you read about ribbon mics are true, or at least they're true about this ribbon mic, right? It does sound a bit warm, it does sound a bit dark, but it also takes EQ really, really well. And when it's paired with its AEA RPQ 500 preamps with that curve bender EQ and the, the high shelf boost, the R88 Mark II sounds amazing. Previously, you know, when I've recorded sounds, I've never had a microphone that disappeared like the R88 Mark II does, right? I mean, when you're recording, when I, usually when I'm recording sounds with the microphones, I can always hear the microphone between my ears and the sound that I recorded but the R88 Mark II disappears completely, right? And all you hear is the sound that you record. There's nothing in between. It sounds like there's nothing there. Live recordings sound like you're in the room. So were there any cons to this microphone? Maybe a few. It's really, really large. I was not, um, I mean, obviously the measurements are there and you know it, but when it actually arrives and you put it on the stand, this thing is huge. It's positively pornographic. I mean, one of my use cases for this was to capture live sounds in the studio. I wanted to keep it up at all times in case there was something to capture on the spur of the moment. And but because it's so large, it makes placing it in the studio awkward. If you have a big enough studio, it's probably not a big deal. Just keep the plastic sheath on it. But still, compared to something like the Royer SF12, which is much thinner in profile and from reports equally as classy, the size was definitely something to consider. The other thing to consider is that it is a proper studio tool. It's a stereo microphone designed to capture sound at a distance in a room. That means you need a proper studio environment, a properly treated room, and probably some proper preamps as well. It needs a proper studio environment because you will hear your room is the AEA R88 Mark II worth it? In my book, yes, totally worth it. Unfortunately, I could not keep mine. I moved from my studio into more of a home recording environment, and this microphone is not a tool for home recording. My room is untreated, the street is right outside this window, lots of street noise, and the R88 Mark II picks up all of it. If I still had, my recording studio environment, there's no way I would have let this thing out even though I didn't need it and hardly ever used it. That's how much I love this microphone. But on a side note, I still kept the AEA RPQ 500 preamps because they sound amazing even on synthesizers. But that's for another video.